This is God's house, and He is here today. He hears each song we sing and listens while we pray. Well, hi, everybody. It's Miss Beth at Faith Lutheran Church in Saginaw, Michigan. And I've got my brat on and my heart on because today is Valentine's Day. It's Valentine's Day. Oh, I hope you're feeling very loving and, and that you made Valentine's for your friends and family at home. Oh my goodness, it's Valentine's Day and in the church it's also a day called Transfiguration Sunday. Transfiguration. That's a big word, isn't it? And it has something in common with Valentine's Day. Oh, I wonder what they might have in common. Our story about Jesus today and Valentine's Day. You'll have to stay tuned to see. Hello everyone. Welcome to the part of this video where we take time to hear and see another story from the Bible. I just hope my computer acts a little better this week. I never know whether it's going to play games with my words in my mouth until after I see the video. So we'll hope for the best. Today, we're going to leave Mark chapter 1 and jump all the way to the middle or even past the middle of his gospel to chapter 9. And we're going to hear about the strange and wonderful event that Miss Beth was telling us about a minute ago. It's often called the transfiguration. Now, that's really a big word. And who knows what that means? Well, I think I do. Or well, at least one meaning is amazing change. And I don't know if you remember, but from several weeks ago, we took our fingers like this, hooked them, put them together, and went like this. This, that's the sign for change. And Jesus went through an amazing change on the mountain. And we're going to hear about that story right now. It's time for a Bible story. This story happened about 2,000 years ago when Jesus was here on the earth. One day, Jesus went up to a high mountain and brought a few of his disciples with him, Peter, James, and John. Nice, going on a little hiking trip, huh? See the great outdoors, climb a mountain, maybe do a little fishing of men. Get it? Yeah, I get it. But that's not why they went up onto the mountain. It was way more important than just a hiking trip. Jesus wanted to show them something incredible. When they got up to the top of the mountain, Jesus' appearance changed. The Bible says that his face shone bright like the sun and his clothes became white as light. Whoa, I hope they brought their sunglasses or they'd be all like, my eyes. Yeah, sunglasses weren't really a thing back then. Right, they probably just got all squinty then, huh? Probably. But then something else happened. Two other men appeared before them and started talking to Jesus. Wait, 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 hold up. Who are these guys? Where'd they come from? The other two men were Moses and the prophet Elijah. Whoa, wait a minute. Weren't those guys around like way earlier than Jesus was on the earth? Okay, you're getting my timelines all mixed up. This is some straight up infinity war, time traveling, next level multiverse stuff. Calm down, it's not that complicated. Yes, Moses and Elijah were both alive a long time before Jesus was on earth, but they appeared on the mountain with Jesus that day. Okay, what happened next? I bet Peter, James, and John were totally amped to see that happen. They totally were. In fact, Peter wanted to build three memorials right there on the mountain. One for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Classic Peter. But right after he said that, something else happened. A bright cloud covered them and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Wait, was that God's voice that said that? You got it. Oh man, that would be pretty powerful to hear. Oh, it definitely was. When the voice of God said that about Jesus, the disciples fell face down on the ground, terrified. Well, yeah, I've done that just when my mom calls my name from across the house. I know, right? Especially when they use your middle name. That's when you know it's game over. Okay, so we got Jesus shining like the sun, Moses and Elijah hanging out, glowing clouds, the voice of God. What happened next? As the disciples were on the ground, Jesus came up and touched them and said, don't be afraid, get up. When they looked up, everything else was gone, and it was just Jesus standing before them. Then, as they traveled down the mountain, Jesus instructed them not to tell anyone about what they saw until after his resurrection. Um, okay, hold on. Uh, I've got a few questions. Understandable. And so did the disciples. They asked Jesus about what they just saw, and Jesus helped them understand that it was just a glimpse of what would happen in the future. He would come back one day in his glorified body and bring about a new kingdom on the earth. Dude, that sounds incredible. I can't wait for that. Yeah, me neither, dude. The end. 
So in our story today, we hear how Jesus went up on a mountain with his disciples. And then suddenly, instead of just being regular Jesus, the way they were used to seeing him, he turned bright and blinding and beautiful and amazing and awesome and wondrous. And the disciples were just amazed and awestruck and didn't really know what to do. Hmm, what does that have to do with Valentine's Day? Well, let me put it this way. This is a heart, right? It's just a plain old Valentine's heart. It's not even a very thick or special heart. It's just plain. This would be kind of like how the disciples saw Jesus, right? He had a lot of love, but he looked like an ordinary person to them, right? Even if he was a teacher and somebody special, he was still a person who had a lot of love for them. Now, if I were to take this heart and I were to give it to my mom, who's like my favorite person in the universe, do you think I would just give her this plain heart? Or do you think I might do something to dress it up? To show her that she's extra special. Oh yeah, I would. I would add glitter and sparkles and I would write, I love you mom. And I would do my very best artwork and I might put something on the back that was lacy and pretty and I might pick something that was her favorite color and put that on and I might a tape a, um, a chocolate bar on the back because she loved chocolate. Oh my gosh, I would make this the most special heart there was. Because I love my mom so, so much. Well, guess what? Jesus loves us even more than that. In that time up on the mountain with his disciples where he shone so bright, it was like he went from being this ordinary heart showing this ordinary love to something amazing. And that's the kind of love God gives us. Amazing love! It's so awesome, isn't it? There was sure a lot going on up on the mountain that day when Jesus took his three friends with him. Remember last week when we were talking about the football game and the timeouts and the halftime? Well, by the way, I hope your team won last week. Uh, this is a little bit like that. Jesus had a timeout and, um, or a halftime. And during his halftime, two of his coaches, Moses and Elijah, uh, gave him some advice for the second half of his life and the work he was doing for God here on earth. Another thing that was happening is if he had any doubts at all about whether he was doing what God wanted him to do, when he heard that voice of God speaking to him, that probably gave him all the more confidence that he needed. But what I like about this story, maybe the best, it's like seeing two previews before a movie. Someday we'll be able to go back to a movie theater and actually watch a movie. I'm going to be so excited when that day comes. I may watch the same movie all day long. I don't know. Anyway, you know, I hope, maybe you know, before they show the real movie, they show you previews, right, of movies that are coming. Well, this story on the mountain is a little bit like two previews. Preview number one, when Jesus started to shine like the sun, it was a, a preview of the awesome day, we call it Easter, when God raised Jesus from the dead. Awesome. Preview number two, however, Jesus is not the only one who's going to experience that. So when he started shining like the sun, it was preview number two of the day that God will do for us what he did for Jesus and raise us from the dead too. Awesome again. And this preview number two, this promise, is one of the ways we know just how much Jesus loves us. He loves us so much that he will share with us everything that he experienced himself, most especially his resurrection. So this story and all it means made me think of some good signs for today. I know that if I had been on that mountain and I had seen Jesus start to shine like the sun, I know I would have been amazed. And there's our sign. 
take two hands and close your fists and put them by your eyes. Close your eyes and pop them both open together. Amazed. Now make sure again your face is telling the story because if you do this, oh, 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 what happened? That's not going to tell the story. It's amazed. Make sure you do that. The second sign, you know what God said when that cloud came over? He said, this is my son whom I love. And what? Listen to him. So the next sign is listen. Put your hand by your ear. Now, wait a minute. Listen. Sign language is for deaf people, right? Who can't hear. Why would they do this? Well, if you're a hearing person, you might use that sign. Deaf people might use a different sign when they want to talk about listening, and that is two hands like this. Put them up by the side of your head and move them forward. And that's the sign for pay attention. If your teacher saw you daydreaming and looking out the window while he or she was trying to teach you a lesson, the teacher might say, focus, focus, pay attention. That's what this sign is. It's the same thing. Okay, so because Jesus has an amazing love for us, therefore we will listen and pay attention to him. All right, it's time for our song this week. Are you ready to praise God with your singing? I hope so, because I have a great song for you this week. It's called, I Love You, Lord. Because we've been talking this whole time about God's love for us, so now it's time to sing back to God some of that love, right? I love you, Lord. Now, there's a couple of sign language things we're gonna do. We're gonna do Lord, which if you remember is the L, and we start on our shoulder and we go down like this. And then the other one is King, which is the K, almost an L, and we go the same way. They're very similar, aren't they? They're almost the same, L, Lord, and king. The rest of them are just motions Miss Beth made up to help you remember the words. All right, so let's go through the motions and then we'll sing together. All right, so it goes like this. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice, and I'll lift it right up as high as I can go, to worship you, oh my soul. Let me put my hand on my heart. Rejoice. Take joy, my king, there's the king, in what you hear, put your hand behind your ear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. And point to your ears. That's all there is to it. I think you'll pick it up pretty quick. We're only going to sing it through once, but you can rewind and watch it over and over again. That's one of the awesome things about growing in grace. Even if we can't sing together in person, you can sing along at home as much as you want. <gasps> so are you ready? All right. Let's worship. Look at the time. We've run out of it, and it's time to say goodbye. But first, as you know, we will say our prayer together. So repeat after me. Dear God, dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Jesus speaks of love. Jesus speaks of love. And Jesus acts in love. Jesus acts in love. Help us listen to his words of love listen to his words of love and help us pay attention to his acts of love. Help us pay attention to his acts of love. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Continue to stay warm and safe and 
We'll see you next time. Peace be with you. Bye-bye. <laughs>